Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, on the range report, we delve back into the archives. We're going to have a look at the WA 1500 World Championship highlights package, along with interview of Australian team members Marnie Jones and Peter Bruce. Please welcome them onto the range report. Welcome, Marnie. How are you, Mike? Very good. How's uh, life up around Golgong? Yeah, not too bad. We haven't been too affected um, up here with the corona and things are not too far from normal so yeah looking good and peter bruce out in orange uh looking like a nice day out there not too cold today yeah good day mike no it's not too cold today very green um mid 20s today i think so uh yeah should get plenty done hopefully so guys let's dive straight in it's a bit over a year ago you're both in the australian team competing at the wa 1500 i'll, I'll go with you marnie first you were on the organising committee. At what point did you take the organising committee hat off and become a competitor? Because there's a lot of stress and a lot of emotion and nerves leading into a competition. Plus you had that extra responsibilities of being on the organising committee. I don't know that I actually really ever took the hat off, which is probably a little bit of the problem. Um, because you know you can you can compete and people will still come up and ask you things when you, you come off the range or before you're going on the range there was stuff to do so I don't think I managed to actually get the hat off um, I did try you know and and follow my normal routine shooting wise um, on the range and you know I, I did the best that I could at the time um, and yeah that was how I had to handle it I didn't have any choice really it's obviously a great honour to be on that organising committee and, and great to showcase how good we can run an event in Australia. It was, it was one of the great WA 1500 World Championships. Yeah, look, it was really good. I've been to a few overseas and the overseas guys, um, wherever we've been, have been super friendly and run a really smooth competition. Um, we've all had a great time and we're just hoping that, um, you know, to be able to showcase Australia, the Eastern Seaboard, and show them you know, how good a competition we can run over here. So I think we did do that. Um, there was a lot of comments that they that was the best competition that they'd um, ever been to. So that was pretty good. And Pete, for yourself, you had a very good competition. I, I watched you walking around the range and I actually didn't want to say hello to you because you looked so in the zone and so focused. I thought, oh, I don't want to interfere with that. How were the nerves for you going in? Oh, look, look, the nerves were high. Um, obviously, it's, you know, you got a little bit of added weight on your shoulders, shooting on home soil and different things. But um, look, it was good. It was, I tried building up for the event as best I could, building up for the match through the day uh, as best I could. You know, I tried, you know, being my casual self throughout the day, you know, uh, but then leading up to the actual match time, yeah, well, you, you might have seen a different side of me. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was game on. So, you know, you're shooting at the highest stage possible and, and obviously you want to compete for you know, the best of your ability and especially on home soil. Um, it's been very difficult going overseas, shooting in Sweden and Germany, like you've got to um, really try and adapt to the conditions over there as quickly as possible where you know, it was really um, a, a great sort of scenario being able to be on the eastern seaboard we are able to drive or able to take a lot of our own gear and, and have plenty of time on the range and and obviously didn't have to adapt to any of the conditions it was um, beautiful shooting when i shot my uh, down a revolver match and um, yeah look the results showed it was it was a fantastic week and how do you feel that first part of the match you get that first little part away you shoot well does that calm the nerves and then you just get into the zone uh, look, I, was, I felt as though I was in the zone 
um, at the start of the match. Um, I had a fantastic start. Um, it's more about trying to build on the start then. So I was, I shot one of my best 50 meter components that I'd shot in recent times. And we did have a, a slight range malfunction in my 35 seconds, which did slightly alter my focus just a little bit, but I was able to, I was quite happy with myself. I was able to regroup and, and shoot uh, and come home um, uh, very nicely. And then, uh, yeah, obviously the, the results showed at the end that uh, it was a okay match. And Marnie, the camaraderie in the team, obviously Linda Jekyll, the other female member of the Australian team, you guys are pretty close, you're all friends, and you, and you obviously get together at the end of the day, review how you went, support each other throughout the matches as you're going along? Yes, of course. Um, yeah, I've been overseas um, when Linda's been overseas with the team before. And um, yeah, we we all, everybody gets on really, really well. The boys always look after us girls when we're overseas. So, um, you know, it's always, you always felt like, um, you know, every you're just one big family really. But um, no, Linda and I, we support each other and um, try and encourage each other along. Um, so yeah, most of the time we compete against each other. So it, it's good to to actually, um, you know, to be able to support each other like that. And you guys hosted at your house, one of the international competitors came out a week or so early. You had him there, got to, got to show him around a little bit, help him, I think, with his reloading, his ammunition went missing. So you guys helped out in that regard as well? Yes, that's right. Um, Thomas Vinson came over and stayed at our place for a bit over a week beforehand. He had the use of our home range here to um, he had to develop his loads. Um, I didn't help him reload. He has to do everything himself. Um, but you know everything that they needed, um, powder wise, brass, anything they couldn't bring with them that we had organised already previously to have available, and that also went for most of the teams, um, not just you know just Thomas himself. So even for the worlds um the austrians and the germans and that what they couldn't bring over with they had sent lists of what they needed and we had to organize to make sure we could get as close to that um, as possible and pete we had an opening ceremony on the first day of competition we had all the competitors lined up you got to raise the australian flag how was that for you oh mike that was unreal um a true honor like i i dreamt and I'd looked and admired um, past Commonwealth and Olympic um, Games and you know it's a obviously a real honour to be able to raise your the Aussie flag and especially on home soil and that um, yeah I, I didn't think I would have been chosen in that uh, to have that opportunity I, but I obviously yeah tried uh, giving it my best and uh, yeah like a, a lot of emotions going through my uh, my head rather quickly um, but uh, yeah it was something else it didn't add pressure to you is that something that just gets you into the competition it didn't make you feel more pressure carrying the weight of all the Australian support no I don't think it added pressure uh, obviously there was already a fair bit of pressure so um, uh, but I don't know I sort of tried taking each each little opportunity I had in my stride and and just putting it behind me and, and go, oh, right, righto, mate, you're on, you're on home soil. Let's um, let's give this a fair crack. And, and yeah, well, hopefully I did. So uh, I wanted to, you know, do Australia proud. I want to do my fellow shooters proud. And um, I yeah, want to do, obviously, myself and, and my family. And, and first and foremost, my coach and my old man. Um, so I just want to do everyone proud and shoot as best I could and, yeah, I had more opportunities and different things. Yeah, I just take them as, as I went, and yeah, as long as I focused on the on the day and at the time when it counted, uh, that's all that really mattered. And for the rest of the guys, Marnie on the organising committee, I know uh, Dean Bruce was on there, and your partner Lindsay, they shot pre-competition so they could be free to be range officers and run the whole comp. They kind of sacrificed their world championship to make it good for the competitors and good for the Australian team. I, I think, and, and all the volunteers also were amazing throughout the whole week. Yeah, no, they definitely were. Um, I mean, it can, it can go either way weather-wise. Um, it was unfortunate that that first week that, that they had to shoot, 
um, before the actual competition started. The weather wasn't kind to anyone. It was blowing a gale. The targets were being blown over. Um, very difficult shooting conditions, but in saying that, it could have been the opposite way. They could have had a brilliant week and then the actual, you know, competition itself could have had really bad weather. So, you know, it's just the luck of the draw and no, they, they did sacrifice a lot by shooting early and also um, just the time on the range to, to do the ROing and all the jobs, various jobs everybody volunteered for it was just amazing. Like it was all day, every day. So um, tiring um, and then when everybody got back to the hotel of course you know you needed to sort of have a bit of a gathering discuss what happened during the day and it, it sort of went on nights weren't too early but um, I think overall the sacrifices everybody made um, made it the championship what it was you know, one of the best that um, especially the overseas competitors said that they've ever been to so that's pretty good day. Yeah, we had the Swedes and the Germans, obviously the Canadians were there, the Kiwis, they all came on. I don't know if anybody's watching today, they saw the highlights uh, or the replay of the, the show live from the Berrida Hotel. We replayed that last week and uh, a good bit of banter and laughter and uh, birthday cakes around for both of you guys. Yes, we've, we've got birthdays very close together. Yeah, it was, um, it was a bit, I mean, banter is, is part of um, the bonding process and it just shows you how well everybody gets along and that makes it for a very good environment for shooting um, in general so and it's generally like that any every competition we go to so it's, it's quite fun. Well let's jump ahead to final results we'll go firstly Marnie uh, where did you guys finish up in the in the Australian uh, women's team finish up and then we'll go to Pete. Um, well I haven't even looked back at the results so that tells you how worn out I was but um, Linda and I were the, the top two um, women but of course we don't we don't sort of class ourselves separate to the boys so um, I can't I can't even remember exactly what um, place we came but we did really well um, and we were really happy with with ourselves so you know we, we just it was all a bit of a blur really it's sort of just with so much um, going on um, and to try and compete as well so but no we were we were pretty pleased we were, we were up there um, in the middle of the boys so I reckon that was pretty good. Yeah you guys did uh, extremely well uh, really good results all around for both yourself and Linda Jekyll and Pete for you well it, it obviously was planned a long time coming out and to gain the world championship with a fantastic score was it 1494 111 x's i think a world, a world record oh uh, yeah look 1494 um it was uh something else uh i yeah i still get goosebumps every time um you know we mention it and we, we speak about it uh i was fortunate enough to come away with uh yeah two individual world championships and uh and then chris and i won the uh overall teams event um so the final day where all the international teams uh shoot chris and i managed to come away with that one we've uh we've been bridesmaids a few times so uh to finally win that one was was pretty amazing and then and we'll like we're also very fortunate jamie and i also come third in the revolver team which um yeah look any podium position at that level is um is something else and then of course to do the international club teams alongside um, you know, my dad, my idol, my coach, uh, we managed to uh, win the revolver and come second in the auto and that as well. Anytime I get to shoot alongside him, it's, um, yeah, look, I love it. I cherish every moment I can. It was a pretty fun night on the presentation dinner. I know your dad, who was you know, heavily involved with it, he said to me, Westy, uh, we've got a lot of awards. I think we had about 120 awards and about another 100 raffle prizes to give out. He said, these normally go for three, nearly four hours. I said, right, challenge accepted. I think we got through in about 90 minutes. And he was uh, quite stunned. We, were, we had a lot of stuff to give away, a lot of great prizes. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we gave the due recognition to our top three competitors and then we had a lot of raffle prizes. Everyone went away with at least something. Yeah, it was. It was fantastic. Um, the presentation went really smoothly. Um, like there was a lot of behind the scenes work going on. Um, it was a it was a rushed effort to try and uh, get it all planned and ready to go. But I believe everyone had a fantastic night. I know I did. And um, yeah, everyone at least come away with something. Uh, we had a few little cheeky prizes in there, and um, 
yeah, look, it was, it was a bit of lighthearted fun, but you know, that's why we do what we do and that's why we're in the sport. And, uh, it's great fun, good camaraderie, and look, I've got mates all over the world now. And I'll cherish these moments for forever and a day, and uh, yeah, hopefully I get to represent and uh, do it all over again. Yeah, COVID has obviously meant that there's no competition, no international competition this year. Potentially World Championship in 2021, you, I mean, you, you would hope? Yeah, well, they're uh, coming on. I think they've pushed the European Championships back a year. So for the first time ever, the World Championships are actually uh, going to be three years down the track. So 2022 will be the next World. Uh, I believe Austria is going to try and I'll, Austria or Czech Republic might be trying to hold the uh, uh, European Championships, which hopefully, if we get the opportunity and if, um, you know, if international travel is back up and running, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get, might be able to get over there and, and give them a crack again. Yeah, for you, Marnie, same thing. Uh, no WA 1500 National Championship this year. I'm not sure how, what the selection process is around do you go forward with a team that, that competed at the World Championship or will they maybe try and get a competition in so they can have a new selection criteria? It's, uh, it's, it's up in the air for everybody. Yeah, well, it is really. Um, I know that none of our scores um, up until like the end of December um, would be eligible to be put in for um, to go into the team elimination spreadsheet. So from the 1st of January, it'll be back on again. Um, and yes, I'm not sure whether, obviously we have to have a national result for them to actually pick a team. So I'm guessing that the nationals next year will um, be what's going to determine who will be in the team and not. And it is going to be Czech Republic next year for the European Championships. Um, and it is supposed to be Austria the year after for the Worlds, but who knows what will happen with international travel. Yeah, it could be a while before borders open and hopefully we get the Australian borders open within the next period of time so we can start going to national championships and competing again because everything's been put on, on hold, everything's moved back and moved back and moved back and uh, you know, as long as everyone's keeping safe and, and doing all the right things and following all the COVID guidelines, we can all get back to a relatively normal life sooner than later and Orange has been okay for you, Pete? Yeah, look, Orange has been um, reasonably COVID free. I think we've had one or two cases uh, over the whole period. So look, we, uh, we've been abiding by the rules as best we can um, with pubs and clubs and different things. Um, uh, business wise, we've been flat out. So it hasn't really affected us too much um, at this stage. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to you know, do our normal international uh, interstate um, traveling. Um, normally, Dad and I really enjoy going to Tasmania and and South Australia and, and sometimes Cairns. Um, unfortunately, we've been able to miss out on that sort of stuff this year, but uh, uh, we can't really change what's what's happened in 2020. It's been a pretty wild year. So hopefully we uh, can all get back on on normal terms sooner rather than later. And uh, yeah, we get to go around and, and see all our fellow shooters. Um, uh, we've got a lot of close mates that are, are in different states and different things. So um, yeah, hopefully we can get out there and, and start competing. Uh, sooner or later. Well, the other one too is an invitation from the New Zealand shooters to come across. They they competed and WA 1500 is not a big match for them and they want to grow it and they invited yourself and your dad to go across and hopefully grow the sport in New Zealand. Obviously that uh, restrictions at the moment, you can't get there, but fantastic to have the Kiwis coming across and they learn a lot and they're really good people and they're great supporters of the range report. So they're probably on watching now. So hello all the guys across the Tasman. Yeah, good day across the ditch. Um, look, Dad and I had a, uh, it was quite nice. The Kiwis uh, seen Dad and I, um, that they wanted to uh, learn and grow the sport. Uh, I believe they're, they're really enjoying it. Uh, we get constant emails from them, you know, how, how do we change this? How do we fix that? So, uh, you know, more the merrier. We, um, we want to obviously grow the sport um, bigger and better every time. So the more people that jump on board and want to have a shot, and, get into it uh, yeah I'm, I'm obviously more than happy and, and so is dad like we're more than happy to help anyone along the way um, any question big or small it's you know, there's no such thing as a silly question um, you know we'll try and help you out as best we can well fantastic having both of you guys on folks it's been great having our world champion Peter Bruce and one of our top female competitors Marnie Jones 
on our look back at the WA 1500 World Championship. If you enjoy the content we're sharing here on the Range Report, please like and share, grow the following, get on board. Uh, we hopefully will be back in competition sooner than later. But uh, I'm Mike on behalf of the team here at the Range Report. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Okay, range is now clear, range staff on two. We love Australia, our first trip here. Uh, I think it's fantastic and uh, very much enjoying the competition. I've come halfway around the world, I want to make sure my score is correct and I think all shooters should do the same thing. Uh, whether it's a good score or a poor score, it should uh, be absolutely correct. So the process is it's scored by the competitor to your left, then you check it. Once you agree, you submit it. If you don't agree, it's a protest. Canada in 2017 finished 10th. There's only nine countries here. I predict we're going to do better.